Hi everyone, my name is Antoine, I'm an industrial engineer and I'm in charge of the CNC machining processes here at 3D Hubs. Uh, last time we made a video about aluminum 6061 and its different surface finishes and I thought today we'd make a little video about plastics in CNC machining because plastics are an incredibly common uh, material in CNC machining as well. Um, in fact, that's the second most common material uh, chosen after aluminum. So I thought I would just do a little bit round table of what plastics we offer at 3D Hubs, what are the most common ones that are machined or used in manufacturing applications, and then basically describe to you the, the high level properties of these materials, when they're used, why they're used, and what they look like when they're, uh, when they're machined. The most common one that you see in your everyday life on top of that is ABS. Um, ABS, as with many plastics, can be machined. It can be injection molded as well. Uh, but here I have several parts uh, showing an example of what it looks like when it's machined. Um, basically, ABS is a pretty, um, I'm not going to say cheap, but pretty affordable um, uh, thermoplastic. Uh, meaning, once you have the raw material, basically a big sheet of, of ABS, uh, you can machine it to the shape that you want. Uh, ABS is a, as I said, a relatively inexpensive material to machine. Um, it is, however, sensitive to solvents, um, which is both a strength and a weakness because uh, you can't really use it where you have uh, chemical applications or chemicals in your uh, work environment. But on the other hand, you could use uh, this property to polish it with, acet with acetone, for instance, when you want to do that. Um, it is not the best when it comes to dimensional stability. Actually, you can see that this one, uh, I made this part uh, a couple months ago and it already started to uh, slightly warp because the design is not symmetrical. Uh, so it is a bit sensitive to warping. But on the flip side of things, if I wanted to paint this part or if I wanted to glue it together uh, with another piece that were to be assembled to it, I would be totally able to do that, let's say. Um, if you wanted to bond several parts that could not be machined from one block, you could do that with ABS. And that's one of the main strengths uh, of ABS uh, when you want to do plastic prototypes that would be later on, let's say, maybe injection molded if you were to move toward, uh, toward production. Um, I'm probably going to show you a couple examples of ABS in injection molding because that's a very common use of ABS. Uh, you can see here a little uh, test ruler that we made um, with basically the different surface finishes that you can have in ABS when the product gets inject, uh, injected or used in injection molding. Um, yeah, basically you can see that once you move away from uh, CNC machining, uh, then we can of course do another video that explains more in depth what ejection building is and what the differences are uh, for surface finishes. But basically you can see here the machining marks uh, that are for a good looking, relatively normal as machine state, but you can see the tooling marks. Meaning you're probably gonna use this for an engineering application if you won't polish it. But here with injection molding, by controlling and shaping the mold, you're actually able to control way more surface finish of your ABS part. And uh, yeah, another common example, for instance, of where you might find this in, in an everyday object, electronics industry, for instance, an ABS part used in a remote control. Pretty straightforward. Uh, then if you want another material um, that is more, how to say, um, engineering grade, so to speak, uh, that can be used in, uh, let's say, a bit more strenuous applications, and as opposed to consumer industry or everyday electronics industry, you can move to a very popular material uh, that is called Delrin. So Delrin is a branded name um, for a material that is from the POM uh, or POM uh, family. Delrin is an extremely interesting material uh, in CNC machining. And machinists who are experienced in plastics uh, usually love it because of its very high machinability. Uh, basically, it has a way bigger strength and dimensional stability compared to ABS. Um, it is quite objectively a higher quality material. Um, it is also more expensive, of course. Um, it has a lower friction, higher resistance uh, to chemicals. And uh, as such, it is really um, widely used uh, throughout the, uh, uh, the manufacturing industry for engineering applications, let's say. Brackets, um, bushings, anything really where you can need um, a sturdy plastic part that needs um, 
decent chemical resistance as well as good dimensional stability where you would maybe not want to use metals. Um, it has, however, not a really good resistance to fire, so of course it is not recommended to use uh, this product where, um, uh, where you would have an open flame or very high temperatures that could uh, make it ignite, of course. Um, I should note that because this material, when transformed through CNC machining processes, is often used for engineering applications, it does not have the best surface finish. Meaning, if you look at this part closely, you will see, um, you will see the tool marks on this part. This is for a smooth machined part, meaning a part, as we explained last time with aluminum, that's the same thing, where the machinists took care in having sharp tools and controlling the feed rates. So the tool marks are quite minimal, but you can still see them, meaning this choice of material and this choice of surface finish might not be the best if you're looking for cosmetic applications. Hence why it's really used more by engineers as opposed to designers. And that's an important thing to remember uh, when making products. Um, it will be, as I said, used uh, in, uh, mostly in times where engineers do not care that much about the cosmetic state rather than the part being uh, sound, clean, and having a, just, just a clean surface finish. Uh, so to say, and if it's inside of a machine, for instance, or on a fixture, um, this is this is black. Uh, this is black delrin that you can see, for instance. So black delrin comes in its tinted color. You also have white delrin. Um, that is actually there is actually a, a, a range whether you use actually branded delrin or not. A range of colors for white delrin, uh, whether it's natural white. It's not always guaranteed you're going to have pure white delrin. Uh, it's more or less a white that you will have with Delrin, but same with this part anyway, you, you see the machining marks here that are very clean, but you will still see some machining marks. Um, an interesting thing to note with Delrin is that, um, I think I already mentioned it has good dimensional stability, but it is a thermoplastic. And as any thermoplastic, it can have, well, as any material actually, but thermoplastics are more prone to this, it can warp. Basically, meaning uh, when you're going to machine the material, uh, you're going to remove uh, you're going to remove some parts of the material, but um, some other parts are not going to be removed in a symmetrical way, and hence you will see some warping appearing. And it's not always possible to relieve the internal constraints of the material, and sometimes these constraints will make the material warp. So, it is part um, the skill of the machines to prevent warping, but it is also up to the designer to make a part where they know the material will be removed symmetrically so that the constraints of the part will, so to say, pull the material in a symmetrical way um, in order not to have warping. Uh, yeah, Not all geometries can remain stable when machined with Delrin, and uh, that's definitely something as a designer you should be aware of, uh, or an engineer actually, someone designing parts. I should note that POM or Delrin or POM more generally can be used as well in injection molding. Would you want more mass production or bigger quantities or would you want a better surface finish? So let's say here I'm going to I'm going to move towards our scanner here. Um, our IT people are not going to be really happy about me doing this, but you can see here I'm going to take out a little part that anyone who's already opened a printer or scanner will probably recognize. This just a very simple paper guide uh, that you find inside of a printer. Uh, this is a POM part that's been injection molded. And of course, there's been one or two assemblies, but um, the low friction characteristic, uh, characteristic of the material has definitely been used here and because you want the paper to slide on this piece actually on, on the way back. So. Um, Delrin in that case is used not really for a cosmetic part, but really for a mechanical part. And that's really what it does best. Whereas the outside casing of the part, uh, of, of the product would probably mostly, I have not taken this apart, but I, I suppose this is done with ABS as our most electronic uh, cosmetic uh, products. Uh, now I'd like to speak about um, other common materials in CNC machining. Uh, for plastics that are maybe not as common as Delrin, but that we do get uh, a fair uh, a fair bit of request for uh, every day in the CNC machining um, section of things. So the first one I'd like to speak about is polycarbonate. Um, you might have already seen it uh, because polycarbonate is a pretty nice material to machine and it is often used in CNC machining when you want to obtain optically um, clear or optically transparent parts. 
Uh, this is polycarbonate. It is in its as machine state, meaning, as you can see, it is only translucent for now. Uh, would you want it to become optically clear? You would need to uh, polish it. Uh, there are. It, it is actually quite a manual process, but it is. It can be done. Uh, it requires quite a bit of manual skill, but this is definitely something that we're able to do, and uh, people will often contact uh, the sales team or mechanical engineers to inquire. Um, the, how to say the possibilities for design? Let's say. Um, polishing will depend highly, uh, polishability will depend highly um, uh, on the on the geometry of the part that you're uh, being faced with, and some will be, of course, easier to polish than others. Uh, but basically, for some people, uh, this state is uh, is good enough because, let's say, it will let uh, light go through. Um, so this was polycarbonate. Um, maybe we have actually other examples of screen on uh, what it looks like when it is actually optically uh, transparent and uh, polished. Um, another one that I'd like to speak about is uh, Teflon. Teflon is quite a funny one because a little bit like Delrin, it is quite easily machinable, but it has even a lower friction. Uh, it, is, it is actually... Uh, very useful when you require engineering grade applications again that require an even lower friction point uh, compared to Delrin. And actually, if you were to touch the part, you would almost feel like it's it's a buttery part, like a very almost greasy part. It's you, you can even feel the low friction point while rubbing your fingers against it. That's that's pretty amazing. Then again, yeah, applications where you would need low friction, such as bushings, gears. Actually, you may find Teflon gears or sometimes Delrin gears or nylon. Uh, a variation of these, let's say, inside of a printer where you have plastic gears, well, it will be one of those materials that will be used in injection molding, of course, if you have a mass-produced printer or uh, product. Another one now that is probably a very high, uh, a very high-end engineering material uh, is Peak, and it's personally one of my favorites just because of how how nice and how full the material uh, the material looks. It almost feels like. I'm not going to say like a metal, but this just looks so full and so stable um, as a material. And it is really a material that has not only better uh, thermal stability, it has, of course, a higher melting point. Um, and it is used for really high-end applications, let's say in electrical connectors um, or things like that, where you have maybe current passing through um, and where you will need high stability to temperature. Um, it comes in this um, off-brown color that uh, people sometimes describe as amber. So some people don't like the color. I, I personally think it's it's kind of a signature of what of what peak is like, but most likely most times it's not used for cosmetic applications, of course, and only used because of the properties of the material, uh, and and it's very good the mechanical chemical properties. So. I hope I gave you um, a good overview of uh, what kind of materials we offer for plastics in uh, CNC machining. As I said again, uh, to summarize maybe a bit more quickly, you have ABS for the maybe slightly lower, uh, lower cost, but that uh, slightly easier to transform and assemble parts. Uh, you have Dolrin, um, better engineering, uh, better engineering properties, better mechanical properties, better machinability. Slightly less easy to assemble, uh, not really possible to glue it or to polish it. Then you have polycarbonate, uh, good for optical applications if you want to be able to polish it down the line. Uh, Teflon is a good one too when you require low friction. And then finally, peak uh, when you require very good thermal stability or even uh, electrical uh, applications.